Hey, good morning, Clayton, Keith, Phil. I'm just going to wait here a couple minutes, see if um, give everybody a, a chance to come on in, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, good morning, Glenn. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so, we so so this is our fifth web webinar um, of, of all time and this year uh, and and so far what we've focused a lot on um, is in working with a lot of start startup and existing franchisees we're really focused on your guy guy's success so talked about taxes and what you can do uh, to save money uh, accounting and and what you should consider. Um, updates, new legislation from um, the Trump administration, from the Biden administration. Um, but we realized that we worked with so many startups that we know the funding process at this point, like the back of our hands. And we want to speak to um, both if, if you've never op opened a business before, you've never op opened a, a franchise and you're curious um, of how you can do that, or if you own a franchise already, but maybe you want to add a, a second or a third lo location. <clears throat> um, we're going to go over today, what are the, the avenues that uh, franchisees will typically take to get funding? Um, and really what, what, what make, makes the most sense? Um, I, I definitely know before I got into this space, uh, I, I, it was a very like a, a mystifying thing. Like, how do you buy a franchise? Can, you know, do you, I, I just imagine that you needed a lot of money to, to do it and there, there's no other way. And uh, that's not, that's not true. There are many ways, ways that you can fund uh, your franchise. And we're going to go over some, some of the, the, the top ones today. So just a quick agenda, uh, we're going to go through the methods that you can use to fund a franchise purchase. Um, that includes different options when it comes to debt funding or, or borrowing funds, uh, equity funding or, you know, reaching into your own po pocket uh, to, to pay for things. And then, you know, really at the end of the day, what make, make, makes the most sense? So... Uh, you know, you, 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 you want to buy one, or maybe you're like this guy here and you want to conquer the world with six or, 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 or seven franchises, but, um, you, you know that you need money to get there and you're like, well, how do I do that? What's the ways I can do that? Maybe you're a little confused or maybe you're a lot confused. Um, but it's really not that confusing. There's main ways and the ones we're going to focus on today are SBA loans uh, and um, what, what are the, what's the, the, the process to get SBA loan and the benefits there. Uh, the HELOC or the home equity line, line credit and when that ma would make sense. Um, e equity funding, uh, you can self fund if you, you have the fund, funds to just buy uh, the franchise outright. Um, or you can get friends or fam family together and invest together. Uh, and then we're going to go over a, a method called the rollover for business startups or ROBS. 
but before we, we get into the funding methods, you, you really want to understand how, how much do you actually need? Uh, you, you don't want to borrow a whole lot more than you need. And a much uh, the, the, the worst alternative is if you don't borrow enough or you don't obtain enough funding, that can put you in a really uh, tight and bad position. So in considering uh, the, the funds that you're, you're going to need, you want to think about what is the initial fee? So when you go and buy a franchise, they require you to pay some kind of initial fee um, in order to have the rights to, to buy and use the name of uh, the franchise and their systems. Uh, in addition to the initial fee, what are gonna be the working ca capital needs? How, how much are you going to need to run operations into the foreseeable future? Um, you also want to consider what is the complexity behind opening the brand, brand that you're that you're that you're looking at. So, for example, a consulting um, franchise like like a like like a tutoring franchise or a Schoolie Mitchell, for example, uh, would not be as com complex to open. Uh, for example, if you wanted to open like a uh, pet supply place plus, where you have to get a commercial location and many many. Uh, licenses, um, or if you wanted to open like a metal suit supermarket markets, which is also uh, very, very involved. Um, you know, you also want to consider are, are you opening one or multiple ter territories, of course, take the cost and multiply it by two, three, four, etc, et depending on what you're looking to open. Um, is the brand that you're looking at going to require a commercial space, kind of like a couple that I just mentioned, uh, or is it a home-based franchise? Of course, a home-based franchise is typically a lot le le less expensive to, to start out, and therefore you're not going to necessarily need as much funding. Um, and then consider, are you looking to buy a brand new ter territory, uh, or are you buying a mature existing franchise. Um, we, we actually, we just worked with, uh, or we begun to work with a franchisee who bought a, you know, existing lo lo location that's all, it's already doing a million and a half in revenue. Of course, you know, that, that was a very expensive purchase. So they're, they're going to need a lot, they, they needed a lot more than if you were just buying a brand new territorium. All of the, the, the above are really going to drive uh, what funding method you, you choose. So I, I just pulled a, a couple of examples here from low to high of what it could, could look like to buy a franchise. Um, a Schoolie Mitchell, which is a, uh, like, like a financial consulting franchise, you can do it home-based. You don't need... Um, you know, you, you, you don't need a, a commercial location. So the total uh, investment to, to start is somewhere between 64, 74 grand. Compare that to a grounds guys, which depending on um, you know, the number of vehicles that you're gonna begin with, the, the, the state that you're in related costs, that can, 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 can range from 81 up to 200K. And then a Duncan, you know, of course, can can look at you know go from 121k all the way up to a million point eight. Um, so the same me method of fund funding is not going to be effective for all three of these. So so let's start with the the SBA loan, and and this is really really the the, the method that we we typically see and 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 prefer uh, in most instances. Um, you can get 150k to to start your franchise, uh, which is called called the SBA Express Loan. Um, if you think back to to the Schoolie Mid Mitchell example, if you were to get 150k loan and spend 75 5k to open the franchise, that would leave you with a 75 5k cushion of working ca capital to operate um, the business. Uh, whereas if, if you're opening again a a, um, a a Duncan, for example, you you might need to go with the 7A, which allows you to borrow up to five million, um, 
But something to, to keep in mind when it comes to the SBA loan, the more that you, you borrow, um, the more com com complex the process is going to be in order to obtain the loan. Um, the bank is going to want to make, make sure that, hey, if you're borrowing a whole a heck of a lot of mon money, you have a sound business plan and there's a real path to, to pay the money back, right? Um, so why, why would you want to go with an, an SBA loan to fund your franchise? Well, the 150K loan, the, the Express, is government gar guaranteed up to 85%. Which essentially means if at the end of the day it doesn't work 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 out, you're not going to, to lose your shirt. Um, for the the larger loans, anything over 150k, they only guarantee 75 percent. Um, you know, another benefit to the SBA loan versus like like a conventional loan, typically a preferential interest rate. Uh, at the, the moment we're seeing that around. Se se seven to eight to eight percent. There, there's no pre prepayment penalty. So if you hit it out out of the park and pay pay down your loan early, early you you can pay it down be uh, before the 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 the, the ten year term ends. Uh, again, with no penalty. So what what do you need to qualify for for an SBA loan? So your credit it is important. Uh, we typically see high 600s to low 700s to qualify. Um, of course, the higher your, your credit, the, the better. Um, and you have to have a sound, uh, a, a business purpose in order to obtain the funds. The good thing about going with a franchise is the franchise agreement satisfies that. Hey, we see you, you know, this is a successful and operating franchise, so the bank is will, willing to, to, to give funds. Um, this is a lot simpler than if you wanted to come up with a brand new new idea and try try to sell 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 that to the bank. Um, you know you you have to gather uh, important financial do documents like like your your tax returns, you have to prepare a personal financial statement, you you, you need a basic uh, business plan and more. Um, and it has to be a legal and a U.S. based business, and it has to be set up in the the the, the territory where you're going to operate or or, or near it. Uh, and then, of course, you need an EIN or employer identification num number, a uh, DBA, and licensing in order to get the SBA loan. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. Thank you, John. Um, so I'm going to go over some additional uh, ways to fund your franchise, to capitalize your franchise uh, so that you can purchase your franchise. So uh, one we see uh, often is a home equity line of credit or a HELOC. Um, how much can you get? A percentage of the equity in your home, typically up to 85 percent. Here's just an example. Uh, you own a home with an appraised value of $500,000 and you have a mortgage of $200,000. You would be able to borrow up to $255,000 on your HELOC. Why do some of our uh, individuals when purchasing a franchise go with the HELOC? Well, there's low to no cost processing. You can pay down and borrow at will, typically up to 10 years. Uh, very low interest rate uh, if you have good credit. Uh, and the rate is very credit dependent. And you may be able to combine with SBA loan if time correctly ex uh, expanding the available funding. All right. Oh, sorry about that. All right. What do I need to qualify for the home equity line of credit? Well, you must own a home with at least 15 to 20% equity. You need to have decent credit, 700 plus scores preferred. Uh, you do not need a business purpose to obtain a HELOC. It's different from the SBA loan. Uh, like John said, they're funding the, the SBA loan based on the legitimacy of the business. Uh, you will need financial documents, tax returns, up-to-date financial statements if own uh, existing business or pay stubs if W-2 employees, et cetera. Uh, business entity is not required for a HELOC, but still needed to obtain a franchise. So what does that mean? You as an individual can get a HELOC. People use HELOCs for varying methods, but 
if you're going to obtain a franchise, you're going to have to go through with the uh, entity formation process related to forming a business entity. All right, there's also self-funding. Well, how much can you get when you're self-funding? Uh, as much as you have. And, uh, if, you know, I was actually speaking with a client of ours right now, and he's had a really, really good year. And he's got, you know, cash just sitting in the bank. He wants to do something with it. He is actually going to be purchasing uh, a water stations, multiple water stations. Why? Uh, we've talked about this in our previous tax, uh, um, our webinars. He's going to use this so that he can offset this great year he's having through depreciation methods. And this is part of tax planning, but he's gonna purchase probably 30 to 50 machines at one time. So there's an example of self-funding. Uh, why do you self-fund? Well, there's no interest cost. However, there's the cost of equity. Uh, there's the opportunity cost. What else could you do with that money? If you pull the capital out of profitable investments, what capital gains will you miss out on? Will franchise earnings be greater? Here's an example. If you have 200K, earning an average of 10% in an investment account, you take out all the 200K to purchase a franchise, which earns 10K in one year. In this case, you missed out on 10% gains for the 5% gains. However, uh, years two, three, and beyond can grow to gains higher than you would achieve in your investment account. And again, as I said to you before, there's two sides to this coin is the tax planning side as well. Um, if you have multiple investors, how much can you get? Again, it's, it's completely up to the amount of money that you have available. Why multiple invest investors? You can pool risk with other investors, family members, friends, or other interested parties. Uh, you can potentially accumulate more capital and purchase larger and lower risk franchisees. And we have examples here, think McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts. And then the downside though, is investors have control over the business. So they, you need personalities that complement each other. Uh, partner clashes are common and can lead to problems down the line. I will say this though, that if you are going to purchase a franchise, there are franchise models that are basically passive and they have management companies that come in. I've seen um, multiple family members pool their assets together, uh, create a partnership, and then use those funds to build out a specific brand that they have no control over. It's managed by a management company and they just collect uh, checks based on the profitability of the, of the business. So that eliminates that piece where there is some partnership contention that could come up. Oh, and now we're going to go to the rollover for business startups or ROBS. So most people have a 401k, an IRA. They've got sometimes multiple um, uh, ways for them to have retirement savings. So how does this work? First, you have to establish a C corporation. Why? It's the only structure allowed here. Well, this is what the IRS does. There's something there that can be purchased, which is shares. So uh, like John said, remember our tax planning webinar, C corporation is not ideal, but again, it's the only way to use the ROBS. Uh, you then establish a self-directed investment retirement account or a SDIRA, and then you roll from your personal that's probably could be in your company, uh, company sponsored plan, et cetera. You roll that, those funds into the self-directed investment retirement account, the self-direct, the rolled over funds in the new self-directed investment retirement account are then used to purchase all the shares of the C-Corp or a p piece of the shares. W one thing to note with Rob's is sometimes people will be 50-50 owners with that. They'll have some capital that they can contribute on their own, and then they'll leverage a piece of their retirement. Sometimes they'll leverage 100% of their retirement. It's entirely up to you, but the purpose of it is the, the purchase of shares has to occur. There can be partly in the self-directed investment retirement account, or it can be a combination of both, the account and you, the individual. And that's it. You can use your 401k IRA funds to operate your business. So how much can you get? And again, it's whatever the balance of your retirement funds you have. It's pretty simple. Uh, why are there? Why do people choose Rob's? It's out of necessity. 
like you know john said credit when it comes to the sba is important and some of them can't get an sba loan could be credit issues or could be other existing issues maybe they own a business who knows but um also out of necessity, you will need more funds than an SBA loan also can provide. We've seen this with what can be, uh, I guess, defined as heavily capitalized cost businesses. For example, if you need to buy a truck, a trailer, there's equipment. Uh, the loan that John mentioned, the $150,000 loan, the Express, may not be adequate to purchase all the equipment and then have the needed cash flow. So what will people do? They will self-fund, they'll get a ROBS, or they'll get an SBA loan and use a ROBS in conjunction with the SBA loan to capitalize the business. Uh, the pros, the potentially more availability, uh, available capital than an SBA loan. There is no interest cost. The cons, there's a initial fee. Uh, there's a monthly maintenance fee. So the self-directed uh, investment retirement account is in compliance with the SEC standards. Um, it must be a C Corp. Uh, there's, there's higher compliance complexity uh, associated with this uh, entity formation. And it's also very difficult to unwind. Now, why is it difficult to unwind? Well, let's just say you're doing very well. Now, you are going to have to get a valuation on the purchase of the shares. And then there's the question of, well, how do I purchase all these shares back? Just as an example, you know, if you put $200,000 into the business via the ROBS, now, let's say five to 10 years later, you're looking to sell the business, you would get a valuation on the business. And then that valuation would be the new purchase price of the shares. So sometimes individuals will want to say, hey, I, I want to get out of the ROBS for tax planning purposes. What do I do? Well, we've seen it where you can have an individual who invested $200,000 and now the business is valued at $800,000. So for them to purchase the shares back uh, away from this self-directed investment retirement account, they're going to need $800,000. Now there's some serious tax implications that are going to go along with that as well. But the point being is that you would have to get a loan to purchase these shares back. So getting out of the, of the ROBS is a a process typically, um, unless you're going bankrupt and then it's just a simple bankruptcy, but the long and the short of it, it can be very difficult to unwind. Yeah. So, I, I just want to add a, a couple of things there, there, Jason. Um, yeah, absolutely. It can be very, very di difficult to unwind and uh, you, you kind of don't want to go with the Rob's option unless you're planning on sticking sticking it out like you're gonna you're gonna stick stick with the franchise eventually with the plan to sell uh what we've see, seen in the, the past is, is people uh two to three year, years in go hey you know what i'm sick of paying the maintenance fee i i'd rather be an llc or an s corp um and they want to get out of it and that's where it's you know it's not like you can go to a website and click on un unwind and then it's just done it, it, it is quite a process um, especially if, if, if you, you have difficulty obtaining the fun, funds to buy back the business. Um, I, I, I do want to add, though, another pro, pro I didn't include on this list. With the SBA loan, you have a monthly, um, you know, a nut or a monthly amount you need to pay back, back which we see you know, for the express loan comes up to about $1,700 a month. With the the robs, there there is not not a payment back. So from a cash flow stand, standpoint, it, 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 it there it, there is a benefit there. Um, you know the maintenance fee is about fifteen hundred a year, so that comes you know like a hundred and change per 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 month, as a, opposed to that seventeen hundred you have to pay every month. Um, so that that is also a benefit. Yes, yes, that is. Um, so in the instance that anyone here is looking to capitalize their business uh, or, or fund the business or they're going to go through the SBA loan process, uh, we can help you with that. We're, we've got very good resources in our network for all the methods that you can fund. And if any of you want to reach out to us, by all means, here's how you can find us um, and you can go back. You can watch any of our previous webinars. Uh, so just, you know, like we said, with everything, 
no matter how you fund the business, there's also tax implications that need to be considered. Uh, again, and we can definitely help you with that process as well from a tax planning perspective. So um, with that being said, do we have any questions? And it looks like we got one from Glenn. Let's see here. Glenn, let me take a look here. Um, yeah, with the Robs, Glenn. So the question is to everyone. So I have to buy myself out at the present cost of the business if I am to change tax status of the company with a Robs. Uh, well, yes, that's that's true. So if you wanted to change your status of your entity from a C corp to an LLC or to a partnership or then convert to the S corp you would need to get evaluation done. We're doing that right now with the client. They call, we spoke with them. They're getting their valuation performed. Um, and you don't have to buy, this is the thing with the ROBS is your level of planning needs to be significantly more involved and detailed because, you know, like just as an example, right now, um, under the Biden administration, he says he's going to raise the corporate rates from 21%, which was the maximum, uh, to 28 or 29% at the maximum. That's a pretty significant amount of money for our C-Corp clients that are in ROMs. Um, so what's the workaround here? When you get into the ROBs, like John said, you could say, I'm going to stay with this for the long haul. And at 10 years, I'm going to sell to some outside buyer. Then it's no concern of yours. But if you were wanting to make a transition from one entity structure, C Corp, to any other structure, you're going to have to get evaluation. Some of the strategies that we've used with our clients is we have a really, really fair market valuation uh, expert we use. So you're not paying five, ten thousand dollars for evaluation. It's very reasonable. You can get it valued, and if you have cash available, you can use it to incrementally purchase cash. So once a year, you could commit to, hey, I'm going to go ahead and get this valuation and I'm going to get and I'm going to purchase some number of shares back based on that valuation. And they start that in year two, three, four, five, six, so that they can get out of the Rob's transaction. Other times, like I was mentioning earlier, now you've you've started a business it's worth 200 you put 200 into it now it's worth 800 now for you to go purchase these shares back if you wanted to do it at once you need eight hundred thousand dollars so that's the challenge you almost can go okay well i can get a loan for eight hundred thousand dollars but now you're back to this place of having debt uh just for the the sake of changing the structure so the change of structure better outweigh the costs of the debt so there's a lot that can go on there, but yeah, the ROBS is a pretty rigid um, uh, entity structure to be in. Not saying it doesn't have its benefits, uh, but again, the benefit usually relates to taxation. Yeah, and and, and again, if 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 that's your your only route, which happens, right? Like if you just can't get an SBA loan, if if you don't have a home with the equity in it to get a HELOC. Uh, the Robs is is might might be your only path um, for, for forward, but like J Jason had mentioned, you can do a step plan to buy back back your shares o over time. Yep, you got it, uh, Glenn. So <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Phil, that that's that's pretty. Yeah, it's a really good question. I think that's what. Jason just mentioned, right? Jason, if it, eventually if you sell that that that's it's not as 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 big of an issue as if you are looking to get out before you sell the business. Yeah, that's it. Because the person who's coming to purchase the business is obviously going to fund it somehow, and you're going to be, you know, you're going to relieve yourself of the ownership. So, right. yeah, it's pretty simple guy comes in says i'll give you a million bucks as an example okay i'll take the million bucks then the million dollars comes in to the c-corp the c-corp then will purchase the shares back the shares will come back to the c-corp and then the new owner can take over from there because he's essentially purchased all the shares in this entity and it's it's real easy i mean there's some steps in there you know to transition and purchase the shares back but there's no complexity and consideration on the current owners 
um, ability to fund, etc. Uh, that's that's the that's why when people do a ROBS, sometimes they go really big because they know, hey, I'm going to take this business, I'm going to blow this business up, and I'm going to sell it, and that's that. Um, but if you're doing it for the purposes of trying to get into it and then you want to get out of the ROBS for whatever reason, I've we've been having more and more conversations with clients who go, well, here's the, here's the catch-22. Okay, my tax rate just went up 9%. That's not good. Well, can I pay myself more salary? You can pay yourself more salary, but if you pay yourself more salary, what tax bracket are you going to end up in? Are you going to end up over the 28? And then you have to take into consideration Biden's new tax plan. If that salary then increases your, if the increase in your salary is over $400,000, now there's a whole host of other issues we're going to have to address. So it's a, it's a real song and dance. And as you guys can tell, it really goes down to the effective, the effectiveness of C corporation as an entity for small businesses is, has more impact on, based on who the president is. So politics aside, Trump came in, said, I'm going to lower the C-Corps. Great for Rob's clients. Great for getting into it. New president comes in, says, I'm raising the rates on C-Corps. Uh-oh. Now what do we do? Um, so, you know, it's, it's a weird situation where politics ble bleeds into your, your ownership and how much you're going to pay in taxes. But anyhow, um, as it, so it, are there any other questions? Yeah, actually, I see one here under Q&A from, um, it's, an, uh, it's anonymous, uh, for an express SBA loan with no collateral, uh, can my, my home be at risk if the, 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 the business fails? Presume the treasury would be the one that comes after me as a guarantor of the debt. So again, a, be, a big be benefit of the SBA loan ver versus other route, route routes, if you go with the 150K, the express loan, um, the SBA is guaranteeing 85% of that loan. So you are on the hook for the other 15%. Um, and and it, it's, it's just a matter of what, what, what you put up at, as collateral. So you might have put up an investment account, other assets, um, or your home. But you know, if you think about it, a 150K loan, 15% uh, of that is 22 grand and change. Um, so yeah, it, it's really unlikely that they're going to liquidate your, your home in order to, to, to cover that. Yeah. And that is too, you do sign a personal guarantee. So they're, they're, you know, that is part of obtaining the SBA loan, but like John said, your exposure can be somewhat limited. So, right. Um, you know, again, there, none of this is without its, its certain risks. Of course. I mean, it'd be great if the government just handed out 150K here, ha have fun and uh, you lose it all. No big deal. But yeah, they, they do guarantee again on the 150K that 85%. So, um, and, and that's why they, they make sure that, you know, the franchise that you're buying is sound. You do ha have a business plan for success. You know, the, they're, they're not lend lending you the, 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 these funds lightly. Um, really good question there. Um, I think that that's it for, for questions. Real, really quick here, we have a date. Uh, our, our webinars, again, are the third, the third Friday of every month at, at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, our next to topics that are coming up. This will be an interesting one, especially for, for the last question. If you're considering getting an SBA loan, what we're going to go over uh, in June is really to buy or not to buy. We're going to give you a CPA and that analysis on does it make sense to buy a franchise period. Um, in, in July, we're going to uh, go over an update. There's been so many bills and, and legislation and stimulus and this, that. So we're just going to go over a recap, refresher on what's new uh, when it comes to stimulus and government relief programs. And then in August, we're going to go over selling. So if you have a franchise that's maturing and, and, and you're at a point where you might want to walk away, what should you do to get the most bang for, for your buck, right? 
because that's the whole uh, point. And uh, as always, we're very, very, we're very interested in hearing from you. If, if there's topics that you would like us to feature uh, in, in one of our next web webinars, please let, let us know. You can, you can send an email uh, either to John or, or to info at myfranchisecpas.com. Alrighty, so if no other questions, thank you all, all so much for, 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 for attending today. I hope you have a wonderful remainder of your Friday. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.